Hello, and welcome to Top Use Cases to Start Your Serverless Journey. My name is Rachel Sal, Product Manager for Serverless at Google Cloud. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Preston Holmes. We'll cover the benefits and use cases of using Google Cloud Serverless Compute. We'll start with why modernizing is beneficial for everyone, whether you're an established enterprise or a fast-growing digital native. We'll cover why Google Cloud Serverless. We'll dive into why serverless is a good fit for pragmatic enterprises. And then I will hand it over to Preston to talk about great workloads for your serverless journey. Let's start with why modernize. As we look towards the future, there is a growing need for companies to create value through application design. Companies are looking to delight customers with responsiveness, derive value from data and be insights driven, respond faster to change quickly and be secure and available in regions globally. They also wanna be well run with effective cost management while being able to scale quickly to potentially millions of users. These characteristics are no longer just a choice, but an expectation from customers. But companies face barriers internally. These include people and organizational barriers like a lack of confidence in new technology, a need for control, a lack of cloud native skills, a lack of automation. It can also be resistance to change, high tech debt, lack of innovation, lack of cost optimization, and the need to comply with security policies. Overcoming these barriers with a cloud native strategy is important as modern applications are able to achieve outstanding outcomes, including being dynamic, scalable, and intelligent. These characteristics are increasingly important for them to meet fast changing user needs. A cloud native strategy is possible, whether your company is migrating from virtual machines or building new applications cloud native. When a company is migrating from VMs, they often face tight budgets, security concerns, the need to maintain legacy infrastructure, and the need to migrate and modernize their APIs. Modernizing to serverless can help meet many of these demands in a way that is developer friendly while considering cost and time to market. Similarly, Building new applications requires services to be built in a way that reacts to market and customer demands. For these new applications, we developers want to use the latest technology. We don't want to think about upgrades. We want to take advantage of the new economics provided by the cloud, and we want architectural portability so we are not locked in. No matter where you are starting, serverless is a great choice and meets demand of modern applications. Now. Let's explore why Google Cloud Serverless. Serverless is a set of characteristics. It simplifies the developer experience by eliminating the need to manage infrastructure. It is scalable out of the box, whether you want to scale down to zero with no traffic or up to millions of users. It has a pay as you use model where you pay for exactly what you use instead of guessing a capacity upfront. If you don't have any traffic, you don't pay for anything. Serverless technology enables companies to quickly build, develop, and deploy any application in a fully automated environment. It removes the operational burden of infrastructure management with built-in security, operations, and DevOps best practices. As our customer needs have evolved, we've built our serverless compute portfolio to enable them in their journeys. As many of you know, App Engine was one of the first serverless solutions to market in 2008 and early customers took advantage of serverless and App Engine as they scaled their web applications across millions of users on Google's infrastructure. We then added the ability to run functions as a service to our serverless portfolio in 2017. With Cloud Functions, we give customers a simple developer experience with the ability to rapidly write and run tiny snippets of code. In parallel, Google also introduced innovations to the container market with Kubernetes, and we started to hear from customers who wanted to know if we could combine the two awesome serverless attributes of auto-scaling and developer experience with the flexibility of containers. In response, we introduced Cloud Run, the next generation of serverless. Serverless is no longer about event-driven programming or microservices. It's also about running complex workloads at scale 
while preserving a delightful developer experience. In fact, serverless of Cloud Run is about having a true developer platform with the flexibility to run any language, any library, any binary. Serverless offers the following benefits. The infrastructure is managed by Google, meaning that you benefit from deploying on the same infrastructure as Google engineers. Your engineers do not need to think or spend time worrying about scale. Because you only pay for what when there is traffic, it often enables great cost savings. And finally, serverless is secure. Google manages infrastructure level security for you, ensuring that you have the latest patches. You can choose from a suite of Google Cloud security features to meet your business needs. Google Cloud Serverless is the pragmatic choice for enterprises, and it's not just for lightweight applications like this zippy golf cart you might imagine here. We're actually enabling all kinds of heavy duty workloads like this tractor. In fact, this year, we unlocked several security features on Cloud Run, making it even more secure for enterprises. With binary authorization and managed secrets, you can ensure your application is safe to run. With Cloud Armor support, identity aware proxy, ingress settings, and IAM ingress, you can ensure the right folks have access. And finally, you can understand what your application can access with restriction egress out of VPC, intelligent security recommendations, and VPC SC network egress settings. We've also unlocked new pricing options on Cloud Run. Out of the box, you only pay for what you use, rounded to 100 milliseconds. And this year, we introduced committed use discounts, meaning that if you commit to one or three years, you can save up to 17%. And finally, we also introduced CPU allocation controls, meaning that if you have a workload that needs to run continuously, we do not charge for service fees to start Cloud Run back up every single time. In addition, all our serverless products offer built-in observability and monitoring without setup. For example, requests and container logs are automatically sent to cloud logging from Cloud Run and error reporting is automatically enabled for Cloud Run. No additional setup or configuration is required. You can simply view logs on the Cloud Run page and also in the Cloud Logging console. Choosing cloud, Google Cloud Serverless can help eliminate operational overhead, manage costs, on a, all on an innovative billing model with easier scalability. Now I'll hand it over to Preston to see what workloads are a great fit. Thanks, Rachel. So let's talk about some of these workloads. You'll note that in Google Cloud Platform, we have a range of options to run the compute portion of your application code. And these can be broadly laid out on a spectrum between convenience and control. So we've got cloud functions for very small, lightweight snippets of code. We've got serverless containers with Cloud Run. We've got cluster-based infrastructure and Kubernetes and GKE. And then for VMs, we've got Google Compute Engine. So many of these workloads are potentially a better fit for one of these than another, but rather than create a large decision tree, we've decided to pick out three workloads that we think are particularly good fit for serverless and Cloud Run. And those are web applications, data processing, and APIs. Now I'll actually speak to a little bit of a, a sub flavor of each of these to give it a bit more um, context of where you can get started. And so for web applications, I'm going to talk about intranet web applications. So these are applications designed to be accessed only by company employees. And what we want to do is we want to bring you a bit of how we get to interact with our internal applications at Google, which Google has published some research about we call Beyond Corp. And that is, at Google, we no longer use VPNs to access internal applications. Instead, we use very secure identity-aware proxies that can use context about an employee to make sure they have access only to the right internal applications. Now we have externalized this in Cloud Platform as the identity aware proxy, and we can put that in front of our serverless Cloud Run applications. The idea of IAP is that we only want authorized and corporate employees to be able to access those internal applications, and they should not be accessible by the public. But at the same time, we don't want to burden our internal developers 
with having to recreate and reproduce a secure posture for each new intranet application. Instead, that should be globally handled by a front-end system that will make sure only our employees are accessing these applications. Now, this is specifically delivered through a composition and integration of Google Cloud Platform products. It starts with Cloud Identity, which provides an identity service so that we know who it is that's logging into our web applications. It can then be guarded with Cloud Armor, a web application far firewall that does things like rate limiting protection of our applications or can whitelist certain IP ranges. We then hit the identity aware proxy. This gives our users that user login flow. So it makes sure that every access to the actual application has been authorized and the only identified users are logging in. And then finally, the load balancer distributes these requests to multiple different intranet apps. So let's take a look at a demo of this in practice and see what it can look like at your company. So here you can see the intranet project I have set up with several example applications already deployed. I have an intranet home app. This acts as sort of the home page for listing all of my other applications and then a birthdays application and a vacations application. You'll note that the ingress setting for all of these is set to internal and load balancing. What that means is that these are not reachable as uh, directly from the internet. You can see while this URL is here, it's grayed out and is not directly accessible. This is actually enforced for any new cloud run application deployed through organization policy. So for the entire project or maybe a folder of projects, I can set that the only allowed values for this ingress setting is internal traffic only or internal plus load balancing. So we are running these applications behind a load balancer and we have two backend services set up. The first is really just used as our catch-all to route to that intranet homepage. The other is using a wildcard pattern in the host rule. And what that wildcard pattern does is allow us to use a single masked applications network endpoint group. This network endpoint group takes advantage of a feature with its own URL mask there and this service placeholder in the URL mask means that for every new intranet application I deploy that has a service name, I automatically have the route set up to reach that particular cloud run service in this single load balancer without needing to manually create each additional uh, backend for each new intranet application. Now, the beyond core part of this is that I run these behind uh, the identity aware proxy this will force the login flow to reach these applications. I actually have this set up to use our organization only as a source of identity. So this is limited just to our organization. The last thing we'll do here is just check on public DNS uh, Google to see that the domain name I have set up with my load balancer is resolving. And it does, it resolves to this IP address, which is the same as that set up in the load balancer here. So with that, let's take a look at what the login flow looks like. Again, this will be the first time login for a user. And if I do that, I'm given a standard login dialog here. This is using, in this case, my Google account, but we could also use a corporate SSO flow for IAP. And now I'm on the internet homepage. Now I'm seeing a couple other of the uh, applications I can get to. So for example, I can schedule some time off this will route me to the vacations service that is uh, got its own sort of host name path behind this load balancer. I could also go to the birthday service. And again, this will route to that individual cloud run service. So each of these can be independently managed and deployed by different groups or teams or authors. And in fact, you see that IAP will pass through information about the logged in user. So applications can make use of a already authenticated value for the current user to do things like user specific profiles or updates or, or further uh, rule based authorization. Now, subsequent logins to this will not require any particular auth flow and except subject to sort of any uh, timeouts policy my org has set up because this is using cookies to remember this login for some period of time. If I try to log in as a user from some non-organization user account, 
you'll see that I don't even have the option of logging in because the entire uh, OAuth application is limited to only organization users. So this will be another layer of defense that prevents anyone from accidentally enabling specific permission to a user. That's an option on IAP that you can set up and either um, allow that or not allow that. So it's, you're not forced to do that. But it, if you do want to keep this as an organization only internet setup, you can do that. And so deploying a new intranet app is pretty much just as easy as now deploying another uh, container based cloud run service. Each of these scales down to zero makes it very easy. Great, now that we've taken a look at intranet web applications, look at, let's take a look at data processing. Now data processing is really a catch all or umbrella term that might cover any number of types of changes or mutations you're going to make to the data you have, which include converting data, packaging data, validating data. So it really covers a wide range of use cases. So let's take a look at something that's a bit more specific, which is performing some lightweight data processing at the time of ingest. Now on Cloud Platform, we have a product called Cloud PubSub, which is really great at delivering messages to many of our backend data processing systems. And as an architectural component, it's often very useful to decouple the producers of data from those systems which will consume it. But there are times that you need to bring data into your platform. This might be video game telemetry, might be device data, it might be some sort of external log ingest where what you want to do is not completely decouple this at the point of ingest. So you might want to provide custom authentication at the point of ingest, or you might want to validate the contents of each message and make sure that only good and verified data is making it onto the PubSub topic. And so Cloud Run acts as a very nice scalable point of ingest where you can both receive the data into GCP as well as perform some lightweight data processing at that point of ingest. Another one of the use cases we want to talk today is about REST APIs. Now, REST APIs are not a brand new use case. In fact, uh, they've been around a while, but they still remain a real bread and butter of many enterprise uh, IT projects. This is often where you have multiple services in the back end composed into a single API service, where each back end microservice might be only contributing one element of an overall API experience. So in this case, we have a hypothetical weather service where you might have alerts, forecasts, locations, each being fulfilled by a separate backend and independently deployed microservice. Now, these are all routed through some sort of API management system, often serving the need of authentication or rate limiting or quota management. And then these reach the end user application and either a client or a mobile web application. One of the customers using Cloud Run in this case is Ecobee. Ecobee uses Cloud Run for API services, driving experiences and functionality in their customer facing web and mobile applications. This has allowed engineering teams to ship new features to their customers faster, as new services can be turned up in days, and iteration is made faster by using the same serverless technologies to simplify QA environments, streamlining the path from code to production. By using fully managed databases together with serverless compute, Services scale smoothly and reliably as a whole. These technologies have led to greater operational efficiency, removing many of the incident pages which were due purely to infrastructure issues instead of the applications themselves. And with that, I want to thank you on behalf of Rachel and myself for joining us today.